Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. So probably by the title of this video you're guessing why millennials should be concerned about their finances and money. Yeah, why? Well, let me tell you, millennials are the one generation that is in a huge student debt and has no savings. Did you know that average millennial finishes university with average debt of $37,000. That's $37,000. That's a lot. That means that this burden can impact a huge part of their retirement savings, home ownership, or even delay the time when they're getting married or having kids. Besides that, only 10% of millennials have more than $10,000 in their savings, while 60% of millennials have less than $1,000 in their savings and even 30% of millennials have nothing, absolutely zero in their savings. What's more, there's even more, oh yeah. 60% of millennials has huge credit card debt, which has insanely high interest rates. <gasps> So by looking at the statistics, I can tell that millennials, my friends, my colleagues and other people have no clue about money and their finances. But don't worry, I'm here to help you and I'm going to offer you a five tips that are going to make you better with your finances and you're going to be saving money. But before doing that, please hit that like button and even a subscribe button and we can move on. Oh yeah, that's um, I need to press the like button. Tip number one, save more than you spend. So there were many studies done that showed that nine out of 10 millennials are very optimistic about their financial future and they believe that they're gonna reach their financial goals in the time that they have set. Even though the same study showed that two-thirds of those millennials have no savings or investments under their names. Millennials have a lot of optimism for the future. I do, I do. But it is time to be realistic. Most of millennials that start making money, they start spending it right away. Most of them think that they can start saving for the future later on. But before they know it, they are 50 years old and it's already too late. Living paycheck to paycheck, using credit cards to cover your debts and expecting to have higher income and lower expenses is a huge risk that rarely pays off. Whether you are a millionaire or a broke college student, you're gonna go broke if you spend more than what you make. So pro tip, one of the things that you should start doing right away when you realize that you are spending more than you make is set a budget for yourself. This will keep you accountable for your spending and it is a great start. Tip number two, avoid debt. Let me tell you, debt is scary. Spending money that you don't have always reduces your future options. However, we can say that there is good debt and bad debt. Good debt would be buying yourself a home, refinancing your high interest rate debt or paying for education. For example, only few people have the capital to buy a home without a mortgage and replacing high interest rate credit card debt with a personal loan that has low interest is a good move. Um, not that kind of moves. On the other hand, taking out money to buy a new BMW is a bad debt. For example, many millennials bought their first cars or brand new cars right after the graduation just as a present for themselves. However, what you have to remember that a new car loses 30% of its value right away when you drive off from the dealership. So good debt is an investment that is gonna grow in value or generate long-term income. 
bad debt is incurred to purchase things that lose value quickly or do not generate any long-term income. So always avoid bad debt and be careful with good debt because it can always turn bad. For example, if you're taking money to go to college and then dropping out every two years, well, you just got yourself in a bad situation. With a good debt. Tip number three, prioritize your financial goals. While it is important to start saving your money as early as possible, having health insurance and emergency cash fund also should be your priority. Emergency what? You heard me right, emergency fund. Did you hear about the Murphy's Law? If anything can go wrong, it will. And the same thing applies to your finances. Emergencies can happen, so it is always better to be prepared for them. Therefore, financial experts say that you should have saved up at least three months of your monthly income after tax. However, some experts say that it should be up to six months. So for example, let's say that your uh, take home pay is $3,000 a month. That means you would have to have from $9,000 to $18,000 saved up in your bank account. By having an emergency fund, you will be able to cover your emergencies without needing to go into your savings. This not only will keep you prepared for the emergencies, but this will definitely allow you to sleep better during the nights. At least it allows me to sleep better. And pro tip, I would recommend putting your emergency fund into high interest savings account this means that it will grow from time to time and still gonna be liquid tip number four save regular regular tip number four save early regular regularly tip number four save early regular <laughs> tip number four save early regularly and often from 1960s till 1975, Americans on average saved around 10% of their income, while on 1975 it even reached 17%. Since that high, average savings rate have steadily declined till 1% in 2005. While today the average saving rate is 5%, that still means that people on average save only around $5 from every hundred that they get. $5 not so bad! Unfortunately, that is not enough. According to the study done by Fidelity, only half of the millennials will be able to cover their expenses while in retirement. In this case, financial experts recommend having a savings rate from around 10 to 15% and even some of them go as high as having 20% of savings rate. While millennials save less money than older generations, we have time on our side. And here comes the magic of compounding. Even Albert Einstein said that compounding is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. Saving small amounts regularly over an extended period of time can save you large sums of money thanks to the return on the savings. And the fifth tip that I'm gonna offer for my millennial friends is playing the long game. I know that most people would want to get rich quick and heck, I would want that too. Ooh, ooh me too, me too. But, oh, if you're choosing to get rich quick, you're taking the risky route, which can make you lose all of your savings and investments. For example, the craze over the cryptocurrencies made a lot of people to invest in Bitcoin. But then what ended up happening, Bitcoin fell from 21,000 per one Bitcoin to 2,000 per one Bitcoin. So a lot of people lose their savings and investments. Therefore, to play the long game, you have to control yourself and don't go for the shiny thing. What Warren Buffett says, the most successful investor ever, that regular people don't have the time or knowledge to analyze or do a research on separate companies to invest in. Therefore, what millennials should do is put their money into low-cost S&P 500 index funds 
which will grow over time due to compounding. For example, if you put $100 to an S&P 500 from the age you are 25 to the age 65, you will end up at the age of 65 having $360,000 in your bank account and that's a good amount of cash just by putting $100 monthly. So there is a lot of uncertainty in a global economy. Therefore, I think all of the millennials should start implementing these tips and getting prepared. This also applies to him. Yes, exactly. And personally, I implement all of these tips and I'm getting prepared for emergencies. I'm saving money, I'm putting them in investment funds and I'm hoping to retire earlier. I just want to say thank you for everyone who watched this video till the end and please put a comment down below and let me know uh, what do you think about these tips and let me know how much money do you have in your emergency fund or if you have the emergency fund at all. And what you don't have to forget, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you in the next one. Bye.